three, two, one, and we're live. Welcome once again to HeroQuest fans. Let me just mute my mic there. Yep, so we're getting started uh, just two minutes late this time. So getting better, proving our record here. Um, today, as I said before a couple of times uh, to those who are around, um, I am planning to do Space Crusade. I'm going to do a playthrough today. I have done that before, and of course, I'm not the first person to do this, but I saw Always Bored, Never Boring do it pretty effectively and thought, hey, I'll try my own uh, playthrough. So this is me playing against myself. Kind of shows you what the game is like or what it could be like. So um, I uh, ordered some replacement parts and they finally arrived. So I do have a complete set now of Space Crusade, a.k.a. StarQuest. And I also have Eldar Attack, everything from that expansion except for the box. But what I plan to do today is do a little bit of uh, homebrew once again. So I'm planning to do here, um, I'll tell you. So I'm going to be using these uh, Eldar figures, so these Space Elves. This was the second expansion from 1991. For Space Crusade, and of course, Space Crusade is like a futuristic board game, and it is kind of like the uh, if if you think of Hero Quest as like the Warcraft, then uh, this is like the Starcraft <laughs> type of thing, or Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer Forty Thousand. Now these are tabletop board games rather than war games. They're not RPGs, not true, truly. There's a little bit of role-playing elements in there. But what I'm doing is I'm using this Eldar Attack expansion. All I'm doing is I'm taking the squad of these Space Elves and I'm using them as a faction. So I'm going to have five of these guys. So I'm picking one of each heavy weapon. And of course that means I'm going to have to actually keep track of each one. But I figure I'll give myself a crash course on how to play. And if I make mistakes along the way, that's all right. It's part of the learning process. So I got two of those guys, one of these guys. So notice how they have each have a different heavy weapon. So I believe this is a, a shuriken catapult, a las cannon, and what's the third one here? Let me just actually pull out the parts so I know what I'm talking about. So Eldar Attack has this smaller additional board that you add. That light's a little harsh. So you got this additional board. And then you've got this uh, Eldar Weapons card. So the Shuriken Catapult is kind of the basic weapon that everybody has. It's like the Bolter equivalent, you know, if you're playing with the Space Marines. So you've got guys that have that basic weapon, and of course they just attach right on there. These figures are actually kind of a light blue color rather than the gray. They may appear on camera just because of my lighting here. And then you've got the Shuriken Cannon and the Laz Cannon or Laser Cannon. And then the Missile Launcher is this big vacuum cleaner proton pack looking gun. And they each have their own abilities there. So as you can see, the last cannon gets two shots, um, one red die, that is a heavy weapons die per shot. And then with hand-to-hand -hand combat, all of the Eldar characters have two white dice for their melee. The shuriken cannon may fire up to three times with uh, red, one heavy, and one white, one light combat die. And the missile launcher attacks a square of three by three. So it'll attack up to six squares. You pick a target and then it hits the surrounding area with splash damage and two red. The shuriken catapult fires with two white. And then just telling you what the Eldar have. So the Eldar reference. So the Exarch, which is the leader, he's referred to as the Patriarch in the StarQuest German version. But he gets to move seven squares. The Eldar warriors also move seven squares. So notice one more than your typical space marines who move six. 
The Eldar warrior with a heavy weapon moves three squares, so he's actually slower than a space marine with a heavy weapon, so three instead of four. Armor. All Eldar warriors and Eldar Exarch have an armor value of two. Now, they each have only one life point, but the Eldar Exarch, he has special abilities, and for each one that he hasn't used up, it basically can absorb a hit of damage. So if he has a bunch of them left, he could, in theory, have up to six life points, essentially, the equivalent. So similar to a Space Marine commander. But if he's used them all up and he gets hit, he's dead. So the Exarch, the leader, the Eldar commander, he gets a Force Sword and Shuriken Pistol. Now the model for the Exarch actually looks like you can remove his weapon and put any weapon you want. But they intended that he would just have this combination. So he does hand-to-hand -hand combat with three white. And he may fire twice in a turn with two white. So two and two. So he could hit one target or two targets. Now there is a discrepancy. There is a discrepancy between this card. So it may have been printed at a different time than the actual rule book. So I'm going to show you the difference here. And of course, since I am playing both sides, it doesn't really matter, but I've decided that I'm going to read it in the way that benefits the the um, heroic players the most. So we've got Eldar attack here. Actually, the lighting's a little bit better here. I guess this is, my light is too powerful. There we go. So let me, uh, let me read to you the little story, and you'll see the discrepancy that I'm talking about here. Oh yeah, other things that they give you. They give you these two bases. So this shows you the en entrance and exit doors, essentially, for the Eldar. So instead of using the little docking clamp sideboard that clips to the board, they come in through those. So it explains here. So the psychic screen here and the force wall. Force Wall comes into play when the Eldar player uses the Force Wall Generator card. Okay. Oh, I wait a minute. Yeah, I said it wrong. So actually, the Psychic Screen is where they enter and exit. It's like their teleport station. This is for a different situation. Okay. So here we're reading from the manual. This is page four. Eldar attack. Eldar history and background. The Eldar are one of the most ancient spacefaring races known in the galaxy, a mysterious and powerful alien civilization. But they have suffered greatly through the centuries, and they have lost much since the Age of Strife. You'll remember the Age of Strife from the reading of the base game of Space Crusade. Let's do a little... Oh, that's better. Just do a little uh, balancing act with the new camera. Okay. Little is known about them except that their great and highly sophisticated civilization covered many worlds. This civilization crumbled and disintegrated around 10,000 years ago, when all the Eldar homeworlds were consumed by an incredibly powerful entity from the warp known as Slanish, which they had unwittingly awakened. Countless millions of Eldar perished in this cataclysm, although a number did escape. Among these were Eldar who had fled their declining civilization in vast spaceships known as craft worlds, self-contained societies, which included cities, industrial production zones, and their own interior biosystems supporting areas of natural flora, forests, and fields. In time, each craft world became an individual society, each recognized as independent rather than part of a scattered Eldar empire. Despite occasional interracial battles, all Eldar still possess a common hatred of chaos, and the powers from the warp. As a result of the Slanish devastation, the Eldar are staunchly opposed to chaos. They strive to hunt it out and combat it in all its forms. Therefore, in matters of war, the Eldar are most often found fighting the forces of chaos. It is not uncommon for a squad of space marines clearing a space hulk to encounter an Eldar squad engaged in the same activity, for no one can predict where or when these mysterious beings will appear. So pretty cool. So as you know, the, the point of Space Crusade is normally you're sending these space marines out to uh, defeat the monsters they find inside these space hulks, these abandoned ships that are filled with chaos monsters. So like orcs and Gretchen and 
androids and things like that. But you'll recognize there's basically equivalents of almost everything in the Hero Quest world in the Space Crusade world. And I think we might be having some issues with the stream today. I apologize if so. It's a warmer day, so we go through that period where, you know, it's time to shut off the heat and um, get the air circulating again. So Eldar in Space Crusade. Eldar attack provides players with a new race of warriors to battle the forces of the warp and give an opportunity to play Space Crusade with two players on a more even level. So at this point, I'm going to just kind of shift in. Okay, the struggle between the Eldar and the forces of chaos make an ideal two-player game, although the Eldar can also be used in the main game. So they do give you the freedom there. Now, some debate whether it really is fair, because it seems like to make it balanced, this is what other players who are more seasoned at this game than I am have said. They'll say, well, the alien player, if he's facing two Space Marine chapters, so he's facing two other players, it seems pretty balanced. If he's facing three, it's like too easy for the Space Marines. And the Eldar are strong, but maybe not quite as strong as they could be just to face the alien player on the on their own. Because the alien player is like Zargon in this game. He controls all the bad guys. And he tries to collect points by killing Space Marines. Or by killing Eldar. So notice what they say here. Eldar characteristics. Eldar warriors. Armor 2. Okay. So that's, that's correct here, here with the card. Uh, move, seven or three spaces, correct. Life points, one. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, three light weapon dice. This says only, well, let's see. Flip it over. Oh, yeah. For the regular warriors, it only says two. So this is, which one's right? Is it the manual or is it the card? Because hand-to-hand -hand combat for the Exarch is three. So I'm thinking they probably intended for him to be stronger than these other guys. So this is probably the correct way. But just because it benefits me, I'm going to choose to go with the uh, three light combat dice. Because they don't specify. So the Eldar are a very graceful race, combining speed and artistry with deadly fighting skills. They move faster in combat situations, have, situations, having a movement of seven spaces. However, those Eldar carrying heavy weapons lose their rapid movement and can only move at a rate of three spaces per turn. Their heightened reactions and formidable close combat weapons give them an edge in hand-to-hand -hand combat, allowing them to roll three light weapons dice. So they did it again. They don't differentiate between the leader and the followers. So here's how they explain the weaponry. So the shuriken cannon. Let's see, it's far greater range. I'm just going to kind of summarize. Okay. Fire up to three times. So it's reminiscent of one of the Space Marine weapons. Is it the pulse? No, not the pulse. What am I saying? So with the Space Marine weapons, which I'm not going to be using this time, You've got the plasma gun. The missile launcher and the assault cannon. Oh yeah, the assault cannon is the one that's the shuriken cannon is similar to. Because it can hit multiple targets. It looks like they can shoot, move, or shoot, shoot, move, or move, shoot, shoot. The last cannon... kind of does its own thing. I think the laser cannon was provided to the Space Marines in the Dreadnought, uh, mi uh, uh, Mission Dreadnought expansion, which I don't have. That one's super hard to find and expensive. But I won't worry about that. And then the missile launcher works the same as the Space Marine missile launcher. The Exarchs. Okay. So the commander, he has two armor, seven move, Life points, we already talked about that. Okay, three light weapons dice for hand-to-hand -hand combat and two for ranged. Now, he may fire twice in one turn. So that's something else they don't mention here. He can fire twice. Now, it doesn't say he gets two hand-to-hand -hand combat attacks, but he can fire twice. 
they're held in awe. Now they refer to them also as warlocks in this game, which is kind of weird because it's kind of a throwback magic term. Because you think, okay, this is sci tech. This isn't uh, old school magic like uh, maybe in Hero Quest. I've decided that in my demagicified mod, I'm going to call them wardens, which kind of goes along with actually the uh, the ideas presented in the Star Quest game where they have the non-lethal weapons it's like their gsg police so like a warden like a prison warden or game warden so anyway just my own little thing and i'll just call the psychic powers a uh, psionic powers which is also canon a term that they use psychers are basically this futuristic version of a wizard so instead of magic they have mentalist powers psychic powers psyker abilities psionic powers whatever you want to call them Okay. Okay, Exarch skills and equipment. Okay, so they don't have multiple life points. Instead, they have a number of special Exarch cards, which give them skills and equipment. Each time an Exarch suffers body damage, they must discard one card of his choice for each point of damage inflicted. Discarded cards cannot be used again during the mission being played. Once an Exarch has lost all his cards, he is counted as having just one life point, like the rank and file Eldar warriors, and he may be killed by taking damage in the normal way. He may replenish his cards between missions. So again, similar to the Space Marines, he has to be alive to collect your points uh, to advance. I mean, you can get another guy the next time, but you lose a lot if he dies. So before beginning a mission, an Exarch must choose five Exarch cards from the ten available. These are Psychic Focus, Dire Sword, Trance of Indestructibility, Telekinesis, Crack Shot, Mighty Leap, Bounding, or Mighty Strike, Bounding Leap, Distraction, Mental Projection, and Sustained Assault. All Exarchs are armed with a standard force sword and shirk and pistol combination. So he has no choice, according to this. The force sword gives them a high close combat rating, while the shirk and pistol allows them to attack in ranged combat twice in a turn. So again, you would think he'd be stronger than these other guys who are fighting with their fists. Um, or just clubbing people with their big weapon, I guess. But, um, yeah, according to the book, it's three and three. An Exarch may divide the shots before and after his move if he wishes, and he may shoot at two different targets. Each shot is resolved separately. So it's different than Hero Quest, where you can't do an action move and then do an action. Um, here, he can divide them up. Okay, boarding a Space Hulk. So here's the next little story section. I got some cool artwork there. Let's see. Yeah, it's easier with this camera. Okay, boarding a Space Hulk. Thanks to their great psychic powers, Eldar squads are able to move through Space Hulks unseen until they need to go into action. This is because they can create a psychic blinding screen, which they project from the craft world. The psychic screen allows a squad of Eldar warriors to move slowly through an area without being detected. However, as soon as they have registered life readings, the squad must leave this protective screen and start its mission. The psychic screen stays in place where the squad left it, and remains there until the Eldar have carried out their mission and returned to its concealing depths. At the beginning of a mission, the Eldar player should place his psychic screen entrance piece on the entrance board designated in the mission. On his turn, the Eldar warriors move straight out of the psychic screen, beginning their move on the square in front of the screen. From the moment the first Eldar has moved out of the psychic screen, the alien player may place any blip tokens he wishes onto that board. When an Eldar squad has completed its mission, each and every Eldar must move back through the psychic screen in order to end the mission. No other figure may move through a psychic screen. So I've got the campaign game, and it explains that uh, due to their sophisticated nature, the Eldar do not tend to bestow awards such as medals or badges on successful Exarchs. A promotion structure is something alien to the Eldar. <laughs> alien. If an Eldar warrior has proved himself brave, he earns himself honor rather than promotion. A normal Eldar warrior will by no means automatically go on to, to be an Exarch. For only those Eldar who can turn all their inner thoughts and concentration to the art of war become Exarchs. Exarchs therefore advance in terms of recognition and respect rather than rank, although they do gain more skills and are presented with ancestral weapons by their warlocks. However, to represent the growing recognition and respect, an Exarch will receive in Space Crusade. The following table of recognition levels and rewards has been included. So again, it's 
equivalent. So they start out at, at Avenger with four equipment cards, five Exarch cards, and one Order card. So other than their powers, they're pretty pretty much the same as the Space Marines. So then you've got Executioner, Darkstalker, Nemesis, and Avatar. Once he's become an Avatar, he can progress no further. If he gains any more recognition, he must leave to join one of the higher spiritual groups or follow one of the other warrior paths. At this point, your Exarch must leave the game and you begin with the new Avenger Exarch. So the Space Marines are trying to reach that coveted high rank. So this is kind of how the Exarch do it. All right, Eldar missions. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, each mission will list the weapons available for the Eldar squad. The Eldar player can only select weapons for his squad from this list. So since I'm going to be playing a little differently, I'm going to ignore this for, for now. Each mission map will show the Eldar symbol next to one of the four game boards. The Eldar player... So I'm just basically going to take the place of one of the Space Marine factions or chapters with these Eldar instead. There's one new pack of alien event cards. These are designed for use with one to one Eldar missions, but can also be used in multi-squad missions as demonstrated in mission four. So what they're saying is on the last mission, because there's, let's see, there's four. Yeah, there's four in here. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> um, in the last one, they have three Space Marine factions or I keep calling them factions or chapters. So the yellow, the blue, and the red, those three, and then a smaller group of Eldar. So instead of 10, there's only five. So the, the uh, Exarch and four regular warriors together. Oops, sorry, uh, problem with my microphone there. Um, but what they do then is to make it a little more fair for the alien player, he'll draw two alien event cards on his turn. So from the regular deck and from the uh, Eldar deck. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take the Eldar card. We'll see if this works. I'll take the Eldar cards and I'm going to mix them in and still only draw one card. So these changes may benefit the, uh, the heroic players more than the alien player, but we'll see. So we've got the regular deck here that comes with the base game. And then we've got the Eldar ones here. And of course, at the end, I'm going to have to sort all these out again. Actually, <laughs> and I'm not going to cheat. I'm, I'm actually going to try both sides to defeat the other. There's going to be some setup time, so I'm, I'm actually going to pause the stream, take a little break, and come back. Because you don't want to see me setting up. It's going to be kind of boring. So we've got these alien event cards. These are the equipment and order cards for the um, Space Marines. We're going to set these aside because we're not going to use them. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have, just to keep track of things, we're going to use this for the orcs because, yes, I am going to use the orcs again. And they are from the White Dwarf magazine mod. And I'm going to use this more or less for what it's worth for the uh, Eldar. And this one I don't need because it's not. And this is pointed out to me by some fans that, hey, it looks like a scanner. It's like a hand scanner. Beep. <laughs> the scanner they'd be using. And to make it even more complicated, increasing the chance that I'm going to make mistakes as I play, I am going to also be using the furniture that I talked about in the previous stream. These, these uh, terrain crate, uh, sci-fi, space, terrain, starship scenery, they call it. And I got to sort through all this stuff. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix stuff together so that essentially I'm going to be playing one of the regular missions. I'll be playing one of the regular base game missions but using these additional factions and i'm so i'm going to give myself five eldar and they're going to have free weapon selection so whatever i want i'm just going to give it to them and i'm going to have also a faction of orcs here i'm going to have as i explained in the previous one so i've got the knob who is the commander the noble with all his stuff and then he's going to have 
four other guys with him. And so I'm going to have one heavy weapons guy with, uh, I'm going to choose to say that that, actually it kind of looks like a laser cannon now that I think about it. But we're going to say this is an assault cannon because that's how I did it last time. We're going to say it's an assault cannon. And then we've got multiple dudes here. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to take three of these guys. Now these are different models than the orcs I was using before. These little stars I was playing in some other game mode. We're just going to ignore those for now. But notice they have a chain sword. I'm going to say that chain sword is a little stronger than the regular hand-to-hand. -hand. They're going to do one red and one white for melee instead of two white. Uh, but they're still too white for their bolter, their bolt pistol. So we're going to have another one of those guys with a chain sword, a chainsaw sword. That's something from, these are, these are from Assault on Black Reach, which is Warhammer 40,000 from 2008. Now, obviously, uh, White Dwarf Magazine, they want you to, because it's from Citadel, from Games Workshop, they want you to buy more and more miniatures. Also, there is a, uh, card the orcs get to use uh, called freebooter which means you hire a orc pirate to help you out and so i thought it'd be cool to use this one because he has he does have an eye patch let's get that light on him you can kind of see there but he only has one life point instead of six because the knob has six so let me just uh, quickly check the stream here Okay, so we've got a couple of viewers here. So we've got Nintendo Switch XL, Delot X, and Denace 40. Well, I mean, I guess I could keep running the stream and just set up while you're sitting here waiting. Um, who wants to watch me <laughs> set up the game? Um, I think it'd be best if I just pause the stream here. There's going to be some setup, and I apologize for that. I should have done that ahead of time. Um... But yeah, basically what we're, I'll just tell you what we're, what we're planning and you can decide if it's worth it. If you want to watch now or watch, um, on the replay on YouTube several hours after this is done. So we've got the basic rule book here for space crusade. We're going to follow that with the Eldar editions and then the mission book. So last time we played, we actually played the very first space marine mission and i used the orcs with you know 10 orcs instead of um the space marines and actually despite it being disastrous for the orcs uh, they were down to just the commander <laughs> the the knob he was the only one left all his guys died but he did escape with his life and he did get enough points he didn't accomplish the mission. He didn't destroy the Dreadnought. He did uh, escape, and he did go up one rank, believe it or not. So there you go. Um, or no, he didn't go up a rank because he lost. He got an honor badge. So he got he'll have four equipment, or five equipment this time, instead of four, because he has one honor badge. And because the alien player won last time, the alien player is has now gone up to a Chaos Warrior, the second rank, and now gets to keep one event card. The ability to hold one or more cards from the alien event deck, which you can choose to use on any turn instead of drawing a card from the deck as usual at the beginning of his turn. All right. So there's gonna be some things to remember. So this was the first mission I'm going to go ahead and read out the first mission before I get set up, just so you know. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> okay. Mission 2. Primary mission. Mission 547-3, Sector 58. Clear in action. So you can pretend that the orcs intercepted this message, and so they know what's happening um, before the Space Marines have a chance to, to take it. Sector 57 has been cleared. Proceed to Sector 58. Actually, Sector 57 was not cleared because 
the Dreadnought was still around. There's a few uh, enemies still left alive in that one. Alien forces are known to be under the command of a Chaos Commander. Locate the Chaos Commander and eliminate him. All other aliens must be engaged and destroyed. And so this one was meant to be played with uh, up to three chapters. So we're basically taking the place of the Blood Angels will be replaced with the Orcs. And the Ultramarines will be replaced with the Eldar. And it looks like all blip tokens are being used. And I'll just kind of deal those out randomly just to kind of make it a little more fair. We'll have both decks combined for the alien events. Okay, so we've got to set aside these cards here. So we've got the Exarch cards. I'll have to decide which ones I'm going to use. That'll take a little bit of time. It's a lot of them. Oh, these are orders. Excuse me. So since the since the Eldar are starting just starting out, they only get one order. So we'll pick one of those, and we'll pick five of these. It's combat. So it's that. Lightning sustained assault. Oh, that's the same assault sounds really good. Of course, that also means that he has more chances of being hurt. Okay, let's go with sustained assault. And mighty strike seems pretty good. Seems mighty fine. So we'll go with that one. Got three more. Let's see, bounding leap. Jump up to six spaces. Oh, cool. <laughs> Mental projection, short distance. Let's see, what does that do? Move up to two spaces when attacked by an opponent. And I'm a complete noob at this game, so watch me fall on my face, or we'll see what happens. Does not take place. Makes remains to use the whole mission. They move up to two spaces when attacked by an opponent. This places him out of range of line of fire. The combat does not take place. Oh, interesting. So he can just kind of like dodge. That's kind of cool. It'll keep him alive. Of course, if he gets hit, then it just, yeah, takes it away. Well, that's interesting. I guess if it if it fails, he loses another one of his cards. There's a, there's a little bit of interpretation involved. Let's see, Bounding Leap, Telekinesis, open or close any door. Well, I guess that could cut off enemies. Crack shot. One extra light die, any ranged attacks he makes. The whole mission, well, that sounds great. Okay, so we've got one left. Uh, let's see, dire sword. Reroll one light what? Weapons die whenever he attacks in close combat. Uses for the whole mission. Wow, so these make him really strong. Oh, but if he loses the card, does that mean that the ability goes away? Kind of sounds like it. Kind of like in Battle Masters, when the ogre gets hit, he loses some of his uh, fighting strength. To try. Hmm. Probably Dire Sword. But let me just think for a second on these. Trance of Indestructibility. Exarch has three armor points instead of two. Hmm, better armor or better attack? Best uh, defense is a strong offense. Hmm, I don't know. He only has two armor. Maybe it would be better to have more armor. Of course, if he gets hit, then he loses that. So let's go with that. Psychic focus. So that's physical attack and range attack with organic enemies. Distraction. We can distract organic. Yeah, I don't know. 
those are the ones I'm going to go with. So we're doing Trance of Indestructibility, Crack Shot, Mental Projection, Mighty Strike, Sustained Assault. That's going to be a lot to keep track of. <laughs> so I'm guessing this is going to be a long stream. Just, uh, just warning you. Normally I'll block out uh, 6 to 10 p.m. for these, uh, these type of things, so we'll see how it goes. My voice holds out. I got plenty of lozenges. Cheers, Dead Gamer. I also got my water to drink. And so we're going to select equipment next. Okay, these are the alien event cards. So we're going to set these aside. These are going to be mixed in with the regular alien event decks, and I'll have to separate those out at the end. Okay, so equipment warlocks warning. So allows one Eldar warrior to avoid taking any damage. That's kind of cool. Um, sounds like it's preemptive. Okay. So there's two Warlock Warnings, so I could have two of those. Avoid damage twice. I think we're going to say at least one of those. Oops. We're going to take at least one of those. Super Crack Missiles. One extra heavy weapons die when firing your missile launcher. Well, I'm definitely going to have a missile launcher. At Chaos Space Marines, Androids, or Dreadnoughts. It's very specific. Rains are used for the whole mission. Now, equipment you don't lose, thankfully. So, I don't know. That sounds pretty good. Let's let's think about that one. Explosive shuriken. You can may roll one extra light weapons die when firing any of your shuriken catapults, not the shuriken cannon. So, let's see. We're going to have one, two, three, four. Well, we're only going to have one guy with a shuriken catapult. So, that's not that great. Uh, vortex grenades, armed with one vortex grenade, you may attack one alien figure with it and move the alien figure to any other three spaces on the board. <laughs> oh, so you can just teleport him out of the way, basically. That's kind of interesting. That assumes you don't have to kill that guy, but just get him out of the way. By the time he rejoins the group, you may be ready for him. Force wall generator. Okay, here's where the force wall comes into play. So one force wall generator. You may set this up on any attack turn across any two squares. No figure may then fire through the force wall, although they may move through it. it. may only be set up once it remains in play for the rest of the game. So it's just an obstacle. So I guess if you're having a firefight, you can prevent, force them to go around it. Kind of interesting. Web of Skulls. Any figure except the Dreadnought, the attack piece, may not move or fire on its next turn. Means in use for the whole mission. So it's kind of like Tempest. I don't know, that's kind of cool. So it's like miss a turn. I like that. I'm going to go with that. Psychic Link. You may secretly examine any one blip token anywhere on the board once permission. Remains in use for the whole mission. So you can peek at it. I don't know. I'll just... I'm not really too excited about that one. Uh, Runes of Guidance. Shuriken Cannon. So they're now equipped with targeters. Any Eldar warriors using them may try to improve their score by re-rolling one die after firing. I like that. Okay, so I got two so far. I only get four. So that's for the Shuriken Cannon. Now, that's only one guy, though. But it's as long as he stays alive, he gets to use it. And there's one for the Missile Launcher and one for the Last Cannon. And one for the Shuriken Catapult. Rerolling one die. Hmm. So I got two and I got two more. Well, which ones? The missile launcher, shuriken cannon. The missile launcher is so devastating, though. Let's say, let's see. The laser cannon can attack multiple targets. One die after firing. That looks like you could do it twice, so that's pretty good. Let's go with the last cannon. Hope I'm interpreting these right, but I, I'm the judge, so I get to do it. So that, and probably one of these other ones. Void damage, force wall. 
I know. I'm kind of thinking Shuriken Cannon Missile Launcher. Shuriken Catapult. Any Eldar Warriors using them. So that makes it sound like it doesn't apply to the Exarch. Even though he does have a Shuriken Catapult. Or is it a Shuriken Pistol? What is it again? I'm still learning the game here. Shuriken Pistol. Okay, so it does not apply to him. All right, so we're going to do Web of Skulls, Super Crack Missiles, uh, Runes of Guidance for the Laser Cannon, and Warlock's Warning. That's what we're going to do. So he gets four. All right. See, it's kind of like in Hero Quest when you got to pick your weapons. Of course, in this game, you're not buying the stuff. You're uh, you're just starting out with it. Okay. All right, what do we got here? So we're going to combine these two decks. Shuffle them together. Shuffle, de shuffle. You know, there should be a Space Crusade Vibes video where we shuffle the cards. These are not in sleeves, obviously. Now, there are some custom cards I'm going to be making. And they are going to be US game deck size. So they're going to be slightly larger than these. Because these are kind of the smaller like European board game style cards. So they won't be a perfect match. Plus, they're going to be superior smooth, like really smooth on both sides. Whereas these cards have a smooth side and a matte side. Oop, spoilers. So these are all going to be mixed together. But actually, if all of them are in sleeves, you won't be able to tell. They'll, they'll mix in perfectly, and they still shuffle very well. I actually have an automatic card shuffler, but I have a manual card shuffler where you turn the crank. And I tried it out with cards in sleeves like smooth, uh, shiny sleeves, and it actually works pretty well. But if it gets jammed, you got to backtrack it, like walk it back and slowly redo it. Otherwise, you will make marks on your cards. Now, it won't make marks on the cards because they're in sleeves, but it'll make marks on the sleeves, which are unsightly as well. But the point of sleeves are to protect your cards. This is an antique game, but I can tell it hasn't been played as much as like Hero Quest. Either that or they just took really good care of it, but I'm guessing they probably didn't play it as much. So that deck is, I think, sufficiently shuffled. Again, I'm not going to cheat because I'm playing against myself. I'm going to win and lose, I guess, unless I quit early. So set that aside. We're going to set quite a few things aside this time. So all the equipment that we're not using, the mission book we will be using, like I said, from this mission book, we're going to do mission two, but we're just going to be using different factions. And I will keep this on hand to refer to because we're using those rules. And I'm also going to explain. The nice thing about it compared to Hero Quest is you don't have to do any custom rules to play it like this because, I mean, you can go ahead and look at the map. There it is. What did I spoil by doing that? Nothing because the blip tokens are all going to be random. So nobody knows what they are. And it's, since it says all blip tokens, that means unlike the previous mission, there's going to be three more androids potentially, and it, you could fight a dreadnought. So that'll be a challenge. And we've got these extra blip tokens. Now it doesn't say that we're going to use these. So they're not assuming you're going to have them. So their equipments and dummies. So I'm just not going to use these. I'm not going to use these Eldar attack ones because that's just going to goof everything up. And it'll make the game easier because you're going to have equipment and not uh, monsters to fight. So it's either nothing or it's a piece of equipment. And since I'm going to be using the uh, furniture, there's an opportunity to get equipment there. So the way I'm going to do that rule is when you enter a room, each room, you can only do this once. So it doesn't matter what faction does it, it just happens once. They roll a, a die. It's a white die if it's a regular soldier. And it's a, um, yeah, yeah, it's a white die. And if you get a one, then you found useful equipment. And you can draw a card from the pile that you didn't use. So I guess I should keep those on hand, those extra cards. So we're going to kind of mix these up, draw. And if it's a commander, 
so an orc knob or a, a Eldar Exarch, they would have to do a one or a two to get useful equipment. Now, if they get nothing, then it means that room has nothing in it and it can't be searched again. So that's each room with furniture. So that's how I'm going to do it. And once the equipment, you know, once you're maxed out on equipment, then it just it just doesn't happen anymore until you use up some of that equipment. Now, it will make the game easier for the good guys, but that's okay. I just thought it'd be more interesting because I, I like the uh, furniture mechanic from HeroQuest. And it's just, it's missing from Space Crusade. The rooms seem pretty bare. Okay, so we're not going to need these docking clamps, but I will need to reference this just because we are using some of these weapons. We're using the assault cannon. So I'll just kind of keep that on hand. Let's set the others aside. Actually, the orcs will be using one of these docking claws. This is what they call a docking claw. This is like the room you start in, and it's also a safe area, so it's kind of like the staircase in HeroQuest. So the orcs will be using one of these to enter the map. Oh, I forgot. The Eldar have to, let's see, choose one order out of these order cards. Okay, so we've got Combined Fire, three Eldar Warriors who are adjacent to each other may combine their attack dice when firing at one target. Okay, single use, okay. Psychic Attack may launch a Mental Assault against Forces of Chaos. No Gretchen, Orcs, or Space Chaos Marines may move on the alien player's next turn. I'm going to grab a lozenge here. It's already getting kind of dry. Okay. Warlock's Gaze. One Eldar Warrior may use this card once to move, move it twice and attack twice. That sounds great. Now, if this guy gets killed, he's not going to have much to do. Of course. You roll one extra light weapons die in any attack. So he gets to move twice and attack twice, and one time he gets to roll one extra light die. That sounds great. Let's go with that. Now he only gets one order, so I guess that's it. These others just have to forego, because he's starting from scratch. So I get one order, four equipment, and five... XR cards. So we're going to set these others aside. He doesn't get to use these extra orders. I guess we'll keep the rule book on hand just in case I forget how to play the base game because I've only played it once. Now for the orcs. Again, all this setup is necessary. So we're going to be using this. This is from White Dwarf Magazine. So the orc boys are just the regular soldiers and the uh, knob is the um, commander. So he has a plasma pistol. So two red or heavy weapons for firing and then two white for hand-to-hand -hand combat with the pistol. But since he is armed with a power axe here, we're going to say that, what did we say last time? I think we said that he actually has two red for close combat, for melee, hand-to-hand. -hand. So he's basically two red and two red. So that's how he fights. So he's really strong. And that would be the same with this guy as well. He's got the power axe. See, again, I'm just making an executive decision on that. And since it's a pistol, it, can, it can't, like the regular plasma gun can fire through multiple opponents, like the real gun in Quake. But no, it's not like that. It's just two. So two and two, two red, two red. And then for these these guys, like I was saying a moment ago, for hand to hand, they're gonna have I'm gonna say a red and a white with the chain sword. And this pistol, we're gonna call that a bolter. So it's two white at range. So red and white close, two white range. And if I screw up, well, you can call me on it. But I'm giving myself a lot to remember here. Okay, so we've got our Eldar selected, and like I was saying, we're going to have one of each of the heavy weapons, one, two, three, 
And then a fourth one with just a regular catapult, we'll put the others away. And we will have the X arc there as well. And let me just refer the psychic screen. Where the Eldar start. And again, since they're kind of a blue color, I'm going to use them as the as a stand-in for the Ultramarines, the blue team. Okay, so the psychic screen is that rounded thing, this thing. And this rocky base. Actually, sharp-eyed people recognize this base. It would be uh, kind of a dark midnight blue. And would was used in Wizards of Morkar as the wall base. There were three of them. So same exact model. Usually there's little grooves on here where it's been previously applied. So ta-da, there it is. And we actually won't need that other one, I don't think, because we're not using that card. So I'll just kind of set that one aside. Actually, I'll put it in the bag in case I, in case I goofed up and I actually do need it. So yeah, if I were playing this game with a group of people, I mean, I have the patience for myself, but I would have it already set up ahead of time and say, hey, let's play. Here's the uh, combat dice. So nice wooden combat dice. We've got the light white dice and then the heavy red dice. So we'll just set those within easy reach. Oh yeah, something for next time or a feature game which I'm not going to use right now. Um, this is a classic model. This is, and I'm not an expert on Warhammer 40,000 or collecting or anything, but this figure is obviously primed in white. It would have originally been gray. This is a Deathwing Space Marine Librarian in Terminator armor. That's about as nerdy as I can get. I had to look all that up. But this is actually the original model that was recommended for another White Dwarf Magazine article where they give you Psyker powers for the Space Marines. So, But we're not going to be using this guy in this mission. I just wanted to show you that I do have that model. And I used some sticky tack to kind of put him in there. without, Because I didn't want to glue him in there permanently. And I kind of like the fact that he's white. His white armor. Because there is a guy with white armor on the cover that you don't get to play as. I mean, it's either blue, yellow, or red. And I figure instead of having like a Psyker for each... Faction, it's just he could be any faction. So he whatever faction he joins, that's the one that he fights for. So maybe maybe he'll be somebody you rescue or something in a mission. It'd be kind of interesting. VIP. So we'll set him aside for now. And he does not have removable weapons. I actually had to glue those those arms down because that's that's Warhammer 40,000 for you. Oh yeah, I'll show you the, these rank rank things. So in the game, there's you got the primary mission worth 30 points, secondary mission worth 15. That's if it's discovered. Now the bad guy, the alien player, or the chaos player, did go up a rank last time. So what is he? He, instead of being a chaos renegade, the basic rank, he is now chaos warrior. Let's put that there to remind myself. And let's see, the orcs have one honor badge, so we'll remember that. We'll just kind of, there's really no place to put it. I guess I could just do that. And they didn't go up in rank, so they just still have the basic rank of sergeant. That will go there. Six body points, or life points, rather. So last time I pointed out, I believe, that there was one of these rank tokens missing. And I think this was the one, and I had to get a replacement. I found somebody selling it for cheap. So Lieutenant Senores and Captain Primus. I was going to print it, but it was too good a deal to pass up. So now I have a complete, complete base game set. Because again, it's it's a rarer game, 
And especially if you don't live in the UK or Germany or one of these countries that actually got it, um, you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time finding an affordable set. Oh yeah, let me just double check something because rank wise. Commendable, you're awarded two marks of chaos. Okay, so last time the, the chaos player did get two marks of chaos. So I do need to draw out two marks of chaos here. These little tokens are kind of hard to handle if you've got adult hands and you trimmed your fingernails recently. So I let my couple of my fingernails grow out just a little bit longer. It's funny when you do these videos and you've got the camera, it's like any dust, any like hairs or... You know, any smudges, it's like, oh man, why, why did I allow that? But yeah, it's like you got people with gnarly fingernails playing a game, whatever. You know, not judging anybody's personal hygiene, but manicuring. But yeah, if you've got a little bit of a nail to like kind of lift them up, it does help. Try doing this with white gloves, forget it. So these marks of chaos aren't really labeled very well. One, two, three, four. Oh, I see. The numbers are on the back. Okay. So really I should draw out the one and the two. So there's the two. So that's a mark of chaos. And the other mark of chaos, one. That. And I mean, I have to double check. It, it makes the it makes the alien player stronger to have those. Now, if he does poorly, he can lose them. But when you go up in rank, you basically you lose them. It resets what you had. So let's see. All right. So looking at the base rules again. So mark of chaos, none. Oh, if he has two, he gets two extra reinforcement tokens. Well, that's great. That's great for him. All these bonuses the good guys were getting, the bad guys need something. So normally I get no reinforcements. So I'll get two reinforcement tokens. So what I'll do is I'll just randomly draw some reinforcement tokens. Now where would the reinforcements start? I guess wherever I want them to. Because normally they come like on the edge of the board. So I'll just choose a spot where they can come in. So here's the reinforcement tokens, which I didn't get to use last time. Actually, I think these are mixed in, mixed in with the blip tokens. Blip tokens. Oh, here's the blip tokens. This is to ensure that the monsters are always a surprise, at least to the good guys. Oh yeah, here's my orc war boss. So uh, He's just going to tell his dudes that uh, don't kill the Eldar, <laughs> you you morons, because those guys are fighting for the same goal. But at the same time, don't let them get all the loot. <laughs> you know, they're working together towards a common goal. But after that, I mean, who knows, right? If they attack us, we'll attack them. So no friendly fire, guys. Because friendly fire is possible. Like if you shoot a, a missile into a room, the missile doesn't care. It's going to blow up and hit everybody doesn't discriminate. These little bags are kind of hard to open. I was saying about the fingernails. So re two reinforcement tokens. So we're going to kind of mix those around and I'll just draw. Come on, dreadnoughts, dreadnoughts. We need dreadnoughts. Well, those would be okay. I tried not to look I got to put all these back in this tiny little bag, this little jewelry bag. Now these bags wouldn't have been original to the set. There was probably a bag for the dice, but all the plastic would have been on sprues. Sprues are kind of a thing of the past, unless you're uh, Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer, um, yeah, Age of Sigmar or 40,000 player. If you've got metal, I mean, I guess some of the metal are on sprues, but the plastic will be on sprues. But a lot of games nowadays, it's already pre-assembled. I mean, the remake of HeroQuest was that way. 
and it's plus is that hard rubber polymer stuff so it's not like the polystyrene that these old games used which was a classic you know board game material for miniatures all right set, set this aside yeah there's a lot of prep in this game as you can see comparable to hero quest or battle masters i think the first time i set up battle masters it took me like like a couple hours because i was trying to figure out for the first time what everything was inventory everything now with the orcs it's going to be a little easier because i did play as them before and i kind of know how they operate so these are not the final versions of the cards but they're going to be what i'm using so we've got equipment and orders so i'm definitely going to use this equipment freebooter so play the start of the mission. Ta -da. You get an extra orc with the same stats as your knob, except he only has one life point and your choice of knobs weapons. So I'm going to say this guy has the same weapons as the knob that I picked. So he's got a plasma pistol and a power axe. And it looks like we've got some dropped frames here. So I may have to pause and restart the stream anyway. But I'm going to go ahead and finish with the setup. This is like the setup video. Okay, Battle Frenzy, get the gets, Daka Daka, Zaga, move on. So uh, since he didn't, uh, we'll see his one honor, one honor badge. The orc player has one honor badge. So he gets one extra equipment. So he only gets one order still. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did before, which is you go with uh, Daka Daka. Any of your orcs may fire twice. They may fire, move, then fire again, or fire twice before after moving. Okay. So they get that. And then the other equipment. So I've got three more equip or four more equipment. So I think what last time what I did was power armor. So that makes my knob stronger. Um, let's see, custom weapon. Oh yeah, pain boy. So that, that heals your commander, your knob. So that's three. Let's see. Some order... Bionic bits. I'm going to have to refer to the... Because I start to forget which ones are orders and which ones are equipment. Just because, you know, it was in the magazine, so they do it their own way. The cards aren't quite set up in the same fashion. Like, my, my custom prints are going to look much more like they fit with the regular game. Like the other equipment cards. See, so bionic bits is equipment. Well, he's already as strong as he can get in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so I don't need that. Warg, let's see. Daka Daka is an order. Order. Battle Frenzy is equipment. Got three. Oh, two more. What is bolt pistols? Bolt pistols. Yeah, bolt pistols is equipment. Yeah, I think bolt pistols, we, we are going to do that. So bolt pistols. Four, and then one more, I think, uh, custom weapon. Bolt pistols lets you roll one extra light combat die in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Remains in use for the entire mission. So they're stronger. So they'll get three. So actually, they'll be as strong as the Eldar in hand-to-hand -hand combat. So custom weapon, which means we'll pick one guy, one of my regular orcs, orc boys with a Z, and say that he has, he can either use his weapon as a normal bolter or he can put it into multi-barrel death shredder mode 
and unleash a hail bolt of fire with the same effect as a heavy plasma gun. Now to refer to that, the heavy plasma gun fires two white and two red, and it can go through enemies. I believe, because going through enemies is how the the uh, marine one works. So, yeah, I can actually refer to that. So, we'll, now the extra equipment could be found by searching. So, we'll set those aside. Ionic bits. So, these will be set aside. It could be found. Let's see, what did I do with that? Oh, yes. So I have this paper here that explains some more of the rules. So the orc mob, heavy plasma gun. Very similar version of the plasma gun used by space marines. Either fire or move. See, that's a rule i got to remember. So this, this mech guy, let's see, which one should he be? I'm going to say that he's this one. So this is the mech. So he's got the equivalent of a heavy plasma gun. So he can either use bolter or heavy plasma. Now if he uses the heavy plasma he can either move or fire. He can't move and fire. On the turn. Heavy plasma gun attacks everything in a straight line just like a normal plasma gun but gets to roll an extra light weapon die because it's so large. Or extra two light weapons die because it's so large. So two white and two red. Okay, so I'll we'll have to remember that. Now I chose the models deliberately to kind of remind myself what they are. So here we got our doors. We're not going to need these Marines, but we will, will need these. And of course we're going to assemble everything and you're going to watch me assemble every single thing now. Now I'm going to pause the stream, take a little break. We'll be back hopefully before too long. So there's a door because I take all this stuff apart and put it back in the box when I haven't used it. And I think we're going to not use these fancy claws on the alien screen. There's just really no point. It's just kind of there for fun. The set's kind of old, so they don't hold very well anyway. And I only need one of these for the uh, docking claw. Set those aside. All right. So we are going to go ahead and, and pause the stream. And when we return, we will have the game set up, ready to play. Hopefully it won't be too long of a delay. I'm going to set myself a time limit here. I'm going to say 15 minutes. Hopefully that's enough time. If I'm late, I apologize. But I do want to give you um, a game... Got my blip tokens. These are going to be shuffled and randomized as much as I can. And we'll play Mission 2. So thank you everybody for joining us here on HeroQuest Fans. Like I said, we will be back shortly. Both of the videos will be going up on YouTube, XSC3, Home of HeroQuest Fans, later on tonight. Hopefully it won't take too long to upload this time. Uh, sometimes YouTube just decides to just take a sweet time with that. So, all right. See you then. Thanks, thanks everybody for joining in.